We're glad to have Brother Greg Goffin with us. Let's, amen. Let's welcome the man of God to this pulpit tonight. God bless him. Amen. We're glad to have him part with. God bless him. And everybody said, Praise the Lord. Amen. High five somebody around you and tell them you look better than I do. Amen. It don't matter what part of the country I do that in, everybody says it and then laughs hilariously. I don't know if it's because you're thinking what I thought sometimes. When I tell somebody you're looking better than me, I said, I'm looking at him in my mind and thinking I'm lying to this sucker right in his face. <laughs> Amen. I don't know. Some of y'all, I don't know why you was laughing, but that's just what I'm reading into it. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I meant it. Amen. Come on, tell them I meant it. You're looking good like you should. Amen. You have your Bibles, Daniel. Two verses of Scripture, Daniel 9 and Daniel 11. Daniel 9, verse 27, and Daniel 11, verse 31. Daniel 9, 27, Daniel 11, 31. It's great to be back in Parkway. Great to be with the church that I love and appreciate very much all your prayers and your love and all that stuff. Amen. It means a lot. Evangelizing 24, 25 years down, it's always good to preach and always good to be someplace, but amen, it's better to be in some places. And this is one of them better to be places. Amen. Feel like home. Feel like you got a little something in it. Amen. So love y'all. Love the bishop. How many of you love bishop and sister Dylan? Amen. That's a bishop. Love him. Amen. I landed at 2.30 and at 4 we were at a viewing and we laughed before the viewing and cried during the viewing and then after we laughed and how can you not love Papa D? Amen. Good. God for glory. I laughed till I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Amen. And then Pastor Jason Dillon and his sweet wife and the babies, amen. What a great meal. I wasn't going to eat. Got over there and got to looking at that chicken. and whew, All them chickens are going to go to heaven because all they've been in the ministry, you know. So I had to help some of them chickens go to heaven, amen. So I, I ate enough. I said, I think I'm down about a, a Wednesday night gear now. I've ate enough. I'm kind of heavy. So everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. It's great to be here. Amen. I'm going to kind of teach, preach. We'll see what happens. But I do feel a word here from the Lord, and, and I want to talk to you about it. Amen. Daniel 9 and 27. He shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. With many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. This is talking about the Antichrist. He will cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Everybody say he will make it desolate. Even until the consummation and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Daniel 11 and 31. An arm shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. They shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. I want to talk to you for a title tonight, Satan's Supreme Tactic Against the Church. Satan's Supreme Tactic Against the Church. There's a lot of things that he does, but I feel like this is something the Lord has dealt with me about, an absolute key tactic. If we could expose this, amen, somebody might make it to heaven. Come on, somebody. Amen. If we can expose this, we might have revival. Amen. Somebody say, we just might have revival. Amen. So reach over and grab your neighbor by the hand. I know it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Well, let's pray for an open door of utterance with 30 minutes of focus. God, give us a Sunday night hunger. Let our hearts and spirits be open. Let the seed fall on good ground. We ask it in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. If you're not aware of the fact, amen, it would just simply take a quick perusal across the internet, Drudge Report, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, or some news channel to quickly peruse the events of the last few days and weeks, and you would quickly come to a conclusion if you had any spiritual inclination at all that we must be moving into the very final moments of the end time. 
with storms and uh, the last two tornadoes that went through Oklahoma City. Of course, I'm from Oklahoma and my parents, the first one that went through missed my parents by about five blocks. I couldn't reach them until about 11 o'clock that night. It was supposed to be in Alabama the next day. So I changed my ticket, fly, getting ready to fly into Oklahoma City, called my brother in California, and we were just freaking out. We just knew because we could tell the tracking of the tornado and Googled in and could tell right where it was and how big the tornado was, miles, something wide. And we were just like, oh, my goodness. Amen. It's going to be a miracle of God if it didn't get them. And then finally, about 11 o'clock, the phone rang, and my heart jumped up in my throat. And Mom and Dad were okay, but I flew in anyway to see them. And then this last week, another one, and it's 2.6 miles wide. Largest tornado ever recorded, 2.6 miles wide. That looks like the heavens just dropped down. And 295 mile an hour wind, just five miles short of the winds that were recorded in 1999 when the tornado went through Moore, Oklahoma again. So if you're getting ready to move to Oklahoma City, you definitely don't want to go to Moore. I think God's upset at Moore or something. Amen. They're in the crosshairs. Amen. We don't want no more. Amen. But it is a great town, but... Uh, they are in the cross here for some reason. I don't know. Uh, but that would let us know. I got pictures on my phone. I showed the bishop today of hailstones bigger than softballs. One hailstone I showed him, it didn't even look like a hailstone. It looked like God was chunking sheets of ice. I mean, just jagged. If it came down sideways, it looked like it would cut right through the roof. All kind of craziness happening. Floods, fires breaking out, all kind of pestilence. And and the most uh, plain and biblically proved fact that we are in the end time, just this last week, uh, Russia has sent missiles down to Syria. And the Syrian president, Assad, has said that these missiles will definitely be used to shoot against Israel. And then Russia has also put their battleships in the water and they are moving them south towards Israel. Now that may not mean anything to you, but over the last 25 years, Russia, or 30 years, Russia uh, was communist, and they were the bear in scripture, and they were a terror to, amen, the apostolic message. We had apostolic preachers were killed in the underground church of Russia. Brother Nathaniel Urshan, most of you may not know him, but uh, his father, A.D. Urshan, was an evangelist and a prophet to the underground church in Russia. Over a million apostolic, one God, Jesus name, saints of God in the underground church of Russia. When I was in college, Brother Urshan had came back with Brother Sism and some of the others that had went and preached in the underground churches. Literally would leave early in the morning in one car and go a few miles and jump out of one car, get in another car and go another direction. Jump out of a car and go in another and trying to lose KGB that was tailing them till finally towards the evening after jumping car to car and direction to direction they ended up in a church and began to preach to apostolics but there the, the, uh, the interpreter was known to be a KGB man and Brother Urshan knew that what he was preaching was not what this man was saying and he stopped and talked to him about it in the middle of it and he said you just preach and so he just knew the power of preaching it didn't matter what this man was saying he just kept preaching hey, amen and people slip up a hand so we saw him we got there uh, back in St. Louis on quartet tour and the TV channels were there and ca cameras were there from around the country and they were interviewing Brother Urshan because of visiting the Siberian Seven who were in prison in Russia and they went in and were able to visit with them. They were one God apostolics. He put all those TV cameras out, brought us 30 Bible school students in. I can still see him leaning over the chair of his office. His tears began to run down his face and he began to sing, hey amen, songs about the blood and songs about the oneness of God and begin to tell us, hey amen, that Russia was uh, alive and well and the bear, Russia was, was alive and it was tacking against the government and tacking against the church, but it wouldn't be long, he said, in your generation, the bear is going to go into hibernation. And we know that happened under Gorbachev, how that Russia seemed to pull back and that it was if the curtain went down, we sent missionaries into Russia, got them there now and, and they are preaching the oneness of God, but now Putin has come to power and, and he's turning against everything that had been built up and becoming more focused on communism again and anti-American and anti-everything we're standing for and agreements that were made and now he's participating and fighting against it. You say, what difference does it make? It makes a difference because the Lord said to the prophet, he said, there will be a day when I will put a hook in that bear's jaw and I will pull him down against Israel. So the missiles being sent to Syria, that's south, south of God. 
Gog and Magog. And now the battleships of Russia moving against Israel. What I've come to say is this isn't any time to get comfortable. Amen. We are closer to the end than we have ever been. Come on, somebody. I know it's Wednesday, but I feel like shaking us up just a little bit to say, amen, when the rapture takes place, uh, there's going to be funerals getting ready to take place. Uh, there's going to be marriages getting ready to happen. There's going to be parents that just had a baby, but he that shall come will come. I wish I had a preaching church tonight. He's coming. He's coming. Touch somebody next to you and say, he's coming. Amen. There's going to be church services going on when he comes. There's going to be church services that just dismiss when he comes. We're going to be dismissing just about the time California is going to start church. And so between ending church and starting church, the rapture is going to take place. The rapture is going to take place right when school's about to let out. The rapture's going to take place right when somebody's summer's about to begin. It's, it's going to happen right in the middle of youth camp. You say, why are you saying that? Because we think it's going to be way off in some wild view yonder. But the signs of the time reveal that it's closer than we think. It could happen before this week is over. Now that doesn't move us anymore because your pastor had preachers and preached it and preached it and preached it. Till now we're at ease in Zion. It takes too much to stir us. Now look at somebody around you and say a quick amen will get us out of a real tough service. It's taken too much to stir us. We got to get too many twirly birds on the screen. We gotta have too much praise practice to get you enjoying it. We gotta have too much fancy stuff. We gotta we gotta have too many tricks and too many gimmicks to get you moving. So it's a sign of the end time because one of the signs is not just about Russia and the bear, it's not just about Israel, but it will be, it will be, they would be at ease in Zion. So let me ask you, how much does it take to get you stirred? How much does it take to get you on fire? How much does it take to get you passionate about? Can I remind you that heaven will be forever and so will hell? Come on, I know it's Wednesday night. I feel like preaching to somebody. I need to remind you, heaven is not a fairy tale. It's not a myth. This isn't something we just conjured up. But I feel like telling somebody, he that shall come will come and he will not tarry. Amen, but we don't said it the other day I tweeted on Twitter I said I repent for not preaching more on the rapture I think we're at ease because we preached it too little because you know we have to we have to come up with some fancy idea we've got to do theme preaching now we've got to get some fancy program we got to we can't just have church I mean we got to come up with some gimmick we got to come up with a monkey in the hat we, we have forgotten that ladies and gentlemen all of this going to church and living for God and giving in the offering. There's a reason for it. Amen. Amen. We are, we are showing hell and we are proving to God that we love him more than anything. Keep me up in the house if you will. Amen. We, we are proving because there's going to be a moment when it's going to be Hallie here and it's going to be Luya there. And I feel like reminding somebody since we're a little comfortable tonight that ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming. Whether we're ready or not. Oh, I didn't bring a change of clothes. I'm going to have to work. I can see it now. Touch somebody and say, he is coming. I know you fellas that like to get married, but he's still coming. He may come before you get married. He may come before you get any sugar. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. There's some guys saying, I can remember as a kid saying, God, please let me at least get to college. I got to college and I was like, boom, shaka, laka, Lord, please let me get married. Hey. Now I'm praying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> I'm just trying to get some of y'all to respond. So just look at your neighbor and say, fake it. Just say amen like you like him. Amen. Amen. He's coming. So what I'm trying to get to you is you can't, everybody's not going to grow up and be gray-headed. You may not ever get a gray hair. You may never have the joy of being in the delivery room while your wife pushes out a baby. You may never get that because when the rapture takes place, there'll be people ready to get married but haven't gotten married. There'll be people ready to have a baby, but they'll never have the baby. Why? Because the rapture will take place in an hour that you think not. Amen. He will come as a thief in the night. I'm trying to get to you now. He will come as a thief in the night. Why? Because a thief, as a thief, he just slips in. A robber just says, stick it up. But a thief.
thief just slips in like the fog, takes what it wants. Can I say to some of us, I think when the rapture takes place, I don't know that there'll be car wrecks everywhere. I think it might be a few days before everybody realizes, ooh, something's up. Because when he comes, it's going to be like a thief. He's going to slip in and he's just going to take what's his real. know there's going to be tornadic clouds and hurricane winds. I think he's just going to come in like a thief. He's just going to, he's just going to walk in. And while you're distracted with Hollywood, distracted with the ball teams, distracted, distracted with high living, and distracted with Rolls Royces and big houses, and distracted with trying to know who, uh, be known and trying to be better than the Joneses, he's just going to slip in and take what's his. He's coming as a thief in the night for those that are not looking for him. But amen, the apostle said he will not come as a thief in the night for us. Why? Because we are watching. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be so saved that I'm caught off guard and the rapture has happened and I missed it. Oh, I know it's Wednesday, but I'm preaching like it'd be horrible to dress holy and dress godly and work in the church and miss the rapture. It'll be horrible to pay your tithes and pay offerings and come to church twice a week and miss the rapture. That's one thing if you're out whoring around and acting a fool and you miss the rapture, you know better. But what's going to make the rapture just a scary event is because when people that look saved, that act saved, that were born again but had become at ease, those are the ones that's going to be weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Those are the ones that are going to be running, trying to get the church doors open, begging for a little mercy and grace. Amen. Because you said, but wait a minute, I didn't do this. And, and I wore this and I didn't do that. But you were at ease. It takes too much to move us. Now we bought into it. Well, it's Wednesday night. And I know I'm getting old. I turned 52 weeks ago and I'm getting really kind and I understand it's Wednesday. I know. I know you want to. I understand. And we bought into the blood. But what if he comes on Wednesday? Let me ask you, as Mother Arnold would ask you, if he was to come in the next 15 minutes, would you be pleased with your last worship service? Or would you say, but Sunday I did. Would you look at the Lord and say, but it's Wednesday. You know, at least I'm here. You, can you believe all the things we're saying now? Well, at least I showed up. Uh, and I hear the Lord saying, yeah, I showed up too. And I was hung high and stretched. Right, come on, somebody. We got to shake ourselves. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Come on. Well, it's a sign we're too comfortable. It takes too much. We got to get props. Saw somebody a preacher. He's not apostolic, but hey man, their Wednesday night theme is they got a big back screen up, and they got backlighting, and they got to lay in this called something about strip pole series. Oh, he's not apostolic. Oh yeah, I'll show you the picture. <laughs> got it. <laughs> well, there ain't nothing to see, but there's a pole up, and there's there's a woman there. You know, it's behind the screen. You can't see it, but it's shadowed, and it's. I mean, that's the thing. Now, somehow, I don't know how, somehow, they're having, it's a silhouette. Somehow, they're having to use that theme to get you to church and get excited. I mean, we're doing all kinds of stuff. We want to teach on marital relationships, so they got a bedroom built on the platform. And I'm like, what? I mean, we got to do all of that. Do really? Are you that bored with God? See, now you ain't said amen, so I'm out here. I got some pretty notes. If y'all just fake it and say amen, I'll get to the pretty stuff. I mean, do we have to go there? Do we have to? Do we have to be clowns and comedians? And do we? Or, or is there anything in us that said, God, I may not have a Rolls Royce and I may not have a Jaguar and I may only have 800 square feet, but I want to make it to heaven more than anything. I gotta make it to heaven. Am I all right? People are like, oh, you come on now, brother. You got to calm down. I understand. I feel all of that. But 
I'm going to ask you again. Are you happy with your last worship service? Or would you like us to start again and give you another shot at it? While the bishop was up preaching and singing, I wash, I love you. I'm going to look up this way. While the bishop was up talking, some of y'all were carrying on conversations. And, and some of you were texting on the phone, didn't pay attention. Are you happy with your last worship service? I mean, have we got so at ease that the only time we can pray anybody through Sunday night, do we just tell all the sinners, y'all can go to hell all week? The only time we do Holy Ghost stuff Sunday night? We don't, we don't do Holy Ghost talking, talking on Wednesday. We can't do that. I told Brother Pastor Jason, I said, I feel like maybe we ought to, I'm feeling something. It's been a long time since Pookie's been up in here. We might ought to throw into about a 60-day revival. Then neither one get to preach. We do all the preaching. Let's just get on outreach. Let's put tracks out everywhere. Let's try to pray a bunch of why. Well, we can't do that. We're too busy. We got Little League. I know, but Jesus is coming. What about Madison? What about Jackson, Mississippi? What about it? Am I all right? Am I all right? Why are we doing a prayer chain? For what? We'll do a prayer chain and then tell them the only time we really get down is Sunday morning and the rest of the time y'all can just go to hell. I mean, we, we believe in our own foolishness. I'm an evangelist. I get to wait. Now, we can't have revival. You know, someone reason for me come down, brother. We just, we can't do them four or five night revivals. But it immediately lets me know where they're at. Because when a real revival hits, you can do it a lot of nights. Because it's really fun when you ain't having to do strip poles and bedroom scenes. And, and you just bow up and have worship and you see drug addicts running up here and emptying their pocket and throwing drugs in. Watch gang members walk through your door. And watch rival gang members tear their colors off and hug one another. Get I know that don't make nobody happy. But when a real revival breaks out, amen, we don't have to have no tricks and gimmicks, honey. Amen. When we understand he's coming and we're going to say, hey, you need to get to church. Jesus is coming. Don't you see what's happening? I'm staying right here. The greatest sign of the end time is we're at ease. It just takes too much to move us. It's becoming a very odd thing for people to dance and shout in church. Just a few wackos like Bishop dance. That is so of us don't do any more of us. And we just kind of like Cain. God, you just need to accept what I have because I am what I am. You better be glad I'm here. what Cain said. I know you want this blood sacrifice and you have respect for Abel and you don't respect me. Can I ask you, does God respect your sacrifice? Because he respected Abel's but he didn't Cain's. Cain's kind of like, well now this is just the way I'm emotionally built. I'm a veggie guy. I'm not a blood guy. You just like, this is what I am. You don't have to take it like a T.I. is. Sorry, Pookie. Don't get it twisted. He's God. You ain't. So then once you move into Cain, then you become a Cain spirit gets on you. And so then what you start doing is you start making fun of Abel. Until now your only result is if you're going to get any respect out of God, you think is you got to kill your Abel's so that God is seemingly left with nobody but you. So what Cain does is he compares himself with himself and with those that are around him. And then he tries to eliminate all the other competitors so there's nobody left but him. We don't want nobody dump and jumping in this church. We don't want nobody shouting in the church. Come on, Bishop, calm down. Can't you just do that Sunday morning? Why you always got to be up jumping and juking around? Why is that only for three or four people? Why? You know, that's grand sunshine. That's so crazy. It ain't crazy. We ought to praise the name of the Lord in a dance. Why is it so hard to move us? Because somebody says it's too hard to move me. Well, I'm, and I can see it. I, I need to hurry. I can see it. It's kind of like, well, I hope he quit. I ain't been here long. Y'all don't, y'all forgot. I can go a long time. I'm looking at leaders. I'm looking at leaders kind of going like, man, I hope and sometimes I don't even need Holy Ghost. I just need two eyes. Read you like a comic book. Hey man, how, how much does it take to move you? You've been all day, let me ask you, you've been all day through the city. Did you invite anybody to church today? 
How many people did you see? How many stores did you go through? How many businesses did you attend? How many, how many, how many counters did you go to and give money to? Did you say one thing about Jesus? Oh, you know why? It's not because we're not good people. It's because we, you know, it ain't coming, Mama D. It, 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 it's going to be a long time. I mean, you're going to be on the walker, and, and, and Jason and Christine are going to be in the saddle, and you're just going to be. Jesus comes. Everybody thinks when Jesus comes. I know you're looking good, Mama, but you know what? When Jesus comes, we think we're going to be old grannies and grandpa. It's kind of hard and long. But when the rapture takes place, everybody ain't going to be a granny. There's going to be some young mamas ready to have a baby. Amen. And you know what the Lord said? Amen. It would be better that I come before the baby's born. Because if it's born at the end time, woe to the mother that gives suck. You better hope we got a Sunday school department on fire. You better hope we got a youth camp going somewhere. You better, why? Because hell hath enlarged itself. And I, I'm going to stay on it. I'm going to stay on it. Bishop telling me, come on. It just takes too much. Why? And it's everywhere. We have Sunday night. Whatever your main service is, that's when it's boom shakalaka. Hey. Other than that, we don't do nothing. We don't do devils on Wednesday night. We don't get people delivered off of alcohol on Wednesday night. We don't get no nicotine people off. Not Wednesday night. We don't do that Sunday morning. Because Wednesday, we've been working. It's just, we just lucky we showed up. Something's happening. We're at ease. If you look around in here and there's a guest, if you look around and there's somebody and you're struggling with immorality, if you look around in here and there's somebody struggling with some kind of a habit, hey amen, we owe them the very best that we have because this might be the last service they got. Come on, I know it's old-fashioned preaching and I feel crazy doing it, but I've come to remind you somebody could have had their last service and we need to make sure we've done everything we can to make sure they have an opportunity to meet God. What is it literally? It's the spirit of Antichrist. As close as we are, it wouldn't shock me that that dude's living now, walking this planet. We don't know who he is. The spirit of Antichrist has been going since the day of Christ. It's, it's anti-Christ, anti-Meshach, the mediator. It is anti-the anointing. It doesn't want you to be anointed. It wants you to be more focused on money. It wants you to be more focused on being GQ. It wants you to be more focused on a house. It wants you to be more focused on a car. It wants you to be more focused on a career. It doesn't want you focused on an anointing. It doesn't want you. I'm so glad you guys are here. It doesn't want you anointed from your head to your toe. It doesn't want you to walk up to a gang member and say, I lay hands on you in the name of Jesus and watch a gang bust up. Come on, somebody. That spirit don't want us anointed. It wants us to have it only Sunday morning. It don't want us to have it every day. I want you showing up to work with the anointing on you. I just want you to look like a churchy person. It doesn't want you to, they, 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 it doesn't want you to be so anointed. They can look at you and say, you know what? I've been having headaches and I cannot get rid of it. They don't want that spirit, doesn't want you anointed. You say, you know what? Do you believe in Jesus? Yes. Would you believe if I laid hands on you right now, God could heal you? It doesn't want you that anointed. It just wants you to have nice long hair, and I love it. And it wants you to have a clean face, and I love it. It wants you to have a good and I love it. I love all that. But it doesn't want you anointed. You see, that's the deception. We look Pentecostal. But can I remind you, you can put a tuxedo on a pig, but he's still a pig. What good is it if you look like a Pentecostal and you can't pray for anybody? It doesn't want us, Coop. To be able to walk into a store. The Holy Ghost light them up. Oh, we just want some of you can't operate in the gifts unless you got a mic. Only time we got any gifts operates when somebody's got the microphone. Can I remind you that all the miracles happened in the Bible were in the streets, they weren't in the church. How 
much you know, he don't want you anointed. He don't care if you pray for people in here. He just don't want you to walk through the Home Depot and look at somebody and say, hey, the Holy Ghost just came. And they start crying and tell you, I prayed this morning hoping somebody talked to me. He said a lady did it to him today. You understand? It's anti-Christ, anti the anointed ones. You got the Holy Ghost. God didn't just give you the Holy Ghost so you could look churchy. God didn't give you the Holy Ghost so you could have long hair, long sleeves, long dress, long face, long tongue. He gave you the Holy Ghost because it's an anointing that will destroy. Do you understand? It will destroy every yoke. I wish I had a preaching church. Come on, Parkway, I've come to challenge you. You're about to break ground right down the road. You're about to build a brand new sanctuary. Not so we can put you on the front of the herald, but because there's a whole community up here that doesn't need just another church. They need the anointed one. Anointed one. We're even nervous now, and I'm trying to get off of it. You say people are nervous, Elder. You talking to me? I'm talking to you. That's why the new birth is so correct, because when you were born again, you were baptized into Christ. You have put on Christ, and it is Christ in you, the hope of glory. You were baptized into the anointing, and the anointing is in you, and you have put on the anointing. That's what Christ is. It's the anointing. See, some of you, I got one person talking in tongues. Some of you wonder, look at how long spooky going to be? I'm going to do this till you say amen. amen. You were baptized into the anointing. The anointing was baptized into you. It's Christ in you. The hope of glory is the anointing. The only hope this city, this community has. Is that there's some anointed ones that get up in the morning. And they go into Walmart. They go into Target. And when you walk in, you just didn't go to church so you could get your star for faithful attendance. But something So what is the supreme tactic? I think I got your attention. What is the supreme tactic? He reveals it to Daniel. And he shows us a time which we're coming up on when this Antichrist man will be revealed. Three views of rapture, pre-trib, post-trib, mid-trib. Pre-trib is before the tribulation, which is the Daniel's 70th week or Jacob's trouble. And that rapture will take place before then. Why is that important? Because during that time, that's when the seven seals, seven vows, seven trumpets, which are the wrath of God, the orgay, the violent passion of God is unleashed. I don't believe God's going to make his bride go through his violent passion to prove that we love him. I didn't get enough amens. So I don't believe that when you get married, fellas, you need to make your wife-to-be go through a hellacious beating from you as you punch her and kick her and slap her and see if she can endure it till the seven days are up and then that proves her love. That's stupid. Number one, we're going to shoot you. <laughs> Amen. Hits a woman, we need to just jab slap you. Amen. What's wrong with you? I'm like, you don't hit no woman, do you? You don't hit no woman, do you? Amen. Thank you. Thank you for the quick amen. Now, but the natural reveals the spiritual. You wouldn't, you women, I see some of you ladies right now. I dare him to try. Now, neither would God put his bride through his own beatings. So if you're mid-trib, then that means in the middle of the week, which is what the text says, in the middle of the week, the week is seven years. So in three and a half years, the Antichrist has made a covenant with Israel, predominantly Israel, but with the rest of the government of the world. But it's mainly with Israel. And he says, look, we're going to be at peace. You can offer your sacrifice. See, that's what they're trying to do now. Remember years ago, you preaching on the ashes of the red heifer. They're still trying. You know, they still don't have a red heifer. You know why? Because one, one white hair or one black hair disqualifies it from being a red heifer. They are breeding red heifers trying to get one, but they can't get one that's a real red heifer because only one white hair or one black hair disqualifies it. 
Why are they doing that? Because they want to reinstitute the sacrificial system. Why? Why are they? Why is it? What's the big deal about the Islamics and, and, and everybody that's not a Jew fighting over the Temple Mount? And what's the big deal? Because Israel wants to reinstitute the law and the, and the sacrificial system. So thus we got to have the ashes of the red heifer so we can continue the law and the blood sacrifice. The red heifer represents the blood of Jesus. We need the temple because we can't just do it anywhere. That's going on right now. Why do you think the Wayland Wall is such a big deal? But in this text, that's all happened. The temple's built. They've got the red heifer. They're offering the sacrifices. They've collected the ashes of the red heifer. They've burnt her dung, her bones, her fat, her skin. And they've collected all the ashes. It's for the congregation and for the stranger. And they will mix a little of it with water when they need to sprinkle it out. And they will spare it. Something Josephus says one time they had the ashes of the red heifer and it lasted for a thousand years. They only had one red heifer. They will be doing the sacrificial system. The Jews will be happy. Israel, that's God's sands of the sea. That's his earthly people. But in the midst of the week, the Antichrist is going to come and break the covenant. And the Bible says, and I'm preaching now, he will cause the daily sacrifice to cease. And when he does, in the temple, everybody say, in the temple. And when he does, will become the abomination of desolations. It will become a place of abhorrence. It will become a place of ruin and loneliness. The Antichrist will literally set himself up in that temple as God. How does he do it? Causes the daily sacrifice to cease. Now let me just twist it here. Just not twist it literally, but let me just flip it for you. When you got the Holy Ghost, and I'm done in 10 minutes. When you got the Holy Ghost, everybody's got the Holy Ghost, raise your hands. And how many of you have been baptized in Jesus' name for the remission of sin? Now that's why we had a spirit to come up among us here just a few years ago, disqual say that what didn't matter and, and it's just a bunch of brain dead stupidity. I said it, it was a bunch of brain dead stupidity. Why? Because it is the new birth that makes your body when he when you are born again, he buys your body. And he said to the Corinthian church, he said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The word temple is theos in the Greek. It points back to the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament, that 15 by 15 square room that literally the, it is theos, which means the dwelling place of the Shekinah. You know what troubles me? Is almost everybody in there raised their hand got the Holy Ghost, but not everybody in here acts like they are. Are you serious? Your body God says of your house, it's my theos. I bought my own house. You are the holy of holies. Everywhere you go, you are the holy of holies. Now here's the supreme tactic. We can see it at the end time. The Antichrist is going to stop the sacrifice in that temple bishop. But now let me flip it to us pre-rapture. If he can stop you from daily sacrifice in your temple, he will cause your temple to become a place of abomination and desolation. How in the name of God is it that an apostolic blood bought Jesus name baptized tongue talking child of God can turn their could you go from talking in tongues to vodka drinking? What? How could you be, and I'm going to preach it plain now, how could you be a child of God and sent to an apostolic service and not 
raise him. I'm not talking about our elders now. I'm talking about our youngers. Are you, and my, my fear is, Brother Dill, this is what the Lord dealt with me about. Is it possible, now I travel church to church, is it possible that our temples are becoming desolate? Because we have stopped. You know why I make a big deal out of, and God makes a big deal out of. You know why your pastor and bishop make a big deal out of worship? Because, and I don't, I'm not away from my notes and I need clothes. But the Bible says, Elder Cain, let us offer up the sacrifice of praise. Continually. Which is the fruit of our lips. Now, I'm not trying to get everybody to dance. I'm not trying to get everybody to jump. But if you got the Holy Ghost, you at least ought to be able to open your mouth and say, I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, I give you praise. Amen. Why? Because that is the sacrifice of praise. I wonder how close we are to desolation when we can't even open our mouth and pray. Have we got so saved? That we're okay. I don't know about you, Mama D. But I don't want to be so saved that I feel justified in not at least opening my mouth and saying hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. I wonder what would happen in Madison, Mississippi and Parkway Pentecostal Church if we would make a commitment tonight when we leave this building, driving up and down every street, driving down the highway. Every few minutes we just say, praise the Lord. God, I give you praise all over the county. But I know that's hard to do. Because we can't even get some saved people to worship him in here. Much less do it in your car. I don't want to get so saved that I feel like I'm going to God a favor. Sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice. Listen, if it's really praise, it's going to cost you. Let me help some of you. I know some of you having a bad day. The Holy Ghost is talking to me now. I know. David said, I will not offer unto God that which costs me nothing. You can't say, well, I'm not emotional. Lie. Let somebody pull out in front of you. <laughs> Lie. You're emotional. Let, let the boyfriend and husband not do what you want to do. Lie. Whoosh, flames come out. Yeah. Viking. <laughs> let her not do what she said he's going to do. Ah. No, y'all don't. Y'all love each other. But I had to move that cane from between y'all day. I thought y'all were. That's a joke. Amen. You're emotional. I really? Do you really? Now think about it. Calvary, he hung high, stretched wide. Seven wounds. Blood coming out of his sweat pores. Blood coming out of his bowels. They hung him, stripped him naked. He hung naked and not ashamed. Bowels broke. We want church to be all pretty. Calvary was a funky place. His bowels broke out. And while that was going on, there were still people at the cross gambling. Right at the foot of the cross with his back. Ribbons of trembling flesh from shoulder all the way down his rear end, all the way down his thighs to his heels. And they're gambling, Brother Cooper. Playing games. There was even people, Sister Christine, the Bible says, and they sat down and watched him. Are you kidding? At Calvary, you just going to prop up, just throw back and just go. See how long we last? Are you kidding me? You mean you're going to come to church and just throw back? Well, you know what we do in Pentecost? Well, they really wanted it. They get the altar. Well, anybody go to the altar except in a funeral parlor. Real easy to blame the sinners for not what they don't even know you're in town. Well, they don't want holiness. How do you know? You ain't taught a Bible study. You don't know what they want and don't want. I know I'm plowing in here. Because we're at least we want to blame everybody, Brother Cain. 
Well, see, he's just going to hell and hand back at him. How do you know? You ain't talked to nobody about Jesus. They don't want holiness. What do you mean they don't want holiness? Are you supposed to be the example of holiness? When you walk by him and you never say anything. When the Bible said God loves the sacrifice of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Are we so arrogant that we're past feeling that you can literally walk through a Walmart, a Kmart, a Target, or a department store, or a Kroger's, or some kind of piggly wiggly grocery store, and you can walk all the way through that and fill up four buggies of food and feel nothing from anybody. It's because our spirits are not broken. They're too hard. We struggle with holiness. I'm not going to get on it. Everybody says, thank you, Jesus. But he bought the body. And we are to glorify him in our bodies. What's the verse of scripture? Flip this, switch me now. But I'll look at it because I want to get it for you. Amen. It slips me. I'm not going to get on the details. And everybody said, thank you, Jesus. Mm. Ooh, I'm going to find that one. That was going to hurt. Ah, Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Have we got so saved now that you tell God how his body's supposed to look? You mean he but it's still your house. I can do it like I dress it like I want to. Really, I thought he bought it. Sorry, I, I, I thought I was in the Bible. I thought, I thought he bought it. If it's his house and he lives in it and it reveals his glory, I think he cares what his house looks like because it reveals him. I'm not going to give him no details, but somebody please say amen real quick. The body, why is it important? Because of the text in my class. The Antichrist spirit can stop you from daily sacrificing. Your house will become an abomination of desolations. I'll never forget the man. I was at Bible school. When I got there, he walked me. Hair was curled up. Hair wasn't combed. He couldn't move it. His hair always had hair sticking up right here. Because he couldn't get his hand up there to comb his hair. And he'd come dragging in. Shirt tail wasn't ever tucked in good on this side. And he sat right on the front row. Three years of Bible college. Until finally the third year I said to Brother Church. I said, Brother Church, do you know that guy? My director at school, he started weeping. He said, oh, Greg. He said, we grew up together. I said, what happened? He said, oh, Greg, it's horrible. He said, Brother Norris would preach. They called him the bear. He had a big old booming voice when he preached. When I got to school, he talked like this. He didn't have a voice. He said the bear would preach. The power of God would fall at Midway Tabernacle. People would get the Holy Ghost and we'd try to get him to pray and he'd sit back. Greg, he'd fold his arms. He would resist. He wouldn't move. He wouldn't go to the altar. He'd make fun of people that prayed. He got married and he kept on. He never, he never got the Holy Ghost. Never got long-suffering in it. I don't know how far that is, but I know a 
all one preacher do. Left one church and went and took another church. That didn't work, so he was attending another church and got put on the board at a church. And there was a problem started, and people turned against the pastor, and of all things, they started talking about the pastor, and I, maybe I'd have done what he did. He jumped up and started knocking this dude out, and he's punched and knocked him out. And I think I likely want to do that, but, you know, vengeance is mine, say, now I'm going to pay. So if I take the vengeance and God can't handle it, I think I'd let God handle it. I think, hope my brain would kick in. But he just jumped up and went to me. He left out. Oh, he, he, he defended the pastor, but Pastor Jason, he, something happened. He got offended in his spirit. He quit coming to church. He's a very good friend of mine's brother-in-law. The man could preach, jump and preach like crazy. I mean, he could preach. But he got offended, and he quit going to church, and he quit praying, and he quit worshiping. He said, who are you? He said, I'm so-and-so. He said, hey, man, what are you doing? He said, well, Bubba, he said, I was flying in from out of town preaching. And Jesus talked to me and told me I need to give you something. He said, what? He said, come here, Bubba. And he walked up to the door of the truck and he handed him the $100 bill. And the man looked at it. He said, Jesus told you to do this? He said, yeah. And the man, Brother Dylan, fell in the street. that used to pray people through and preach down in the middle of the street screaming, why won't he leave me alone? You stop giving of your time, your talent, or your treasure. When you get so much money you can't give now, you're in trouble of desolation. When you're so saved you can't worship, you're in trouble of desolation. When you've been here so long, how you look and how you dress doesn't matter. You're in trouble of desolation. When we get so saved, Mama D, that you can sit through one of the greatest preachers that's ever been in shoes in the modern Pentecost and it not move you. You're in trouble of desolation. Grab somebody's hand next to you. I'm sorry this has ended heavy. I was hoping to end it high. It is Parkway, you know. I've come to preach a prophetic word to this church and tell you there's a revival coming to this church. This prayer chain is not in vain, Bishop, Mama D. This, this prayer chain is not in Ladies and gentlemen, you don't have any idea how many people are in their homes right now looking at blank walls saying, God, if you're really real, Checked into the hotel in Holiday Inn Express a week ago Saturday when I went to the only room they had. It was cigar smoke-filled. 
I thought there's no way I came down asked there's no other room I went back up going to try it. I just couldn't do it I said I can't do it so I went down the street and checked myself into another hotel comfort inn called the bishop and he said that's fine just stay there all week so I stayed there three mornings ago I had seen the lady taking care of the breakfast hadn't said a word to her just hi kind of how are you but one morning elder there was nobody there but me and her down in the lobby she said can I ask you a question I said yeah in West Bank she said are you a preacher I said I am she said I knew it I said how'd you know I was down there in my Jordan jumpsuit I didn't look like a preacher hadn't shaved had my hat on because I was having a bad hair day she said I can just tell I can feel something I said how could you feel she said I can feel something I said how could you feel she said oh I know about Pentecost she said are you preaching I said I am in town I said I am we're at Old Lane's Boulevard she said at the first Pentecost church at Bishop's Church. I said yes she said oh my God she said my mama go to that church I said she does her mom was one that cuts hair she cut my own hair she just had foot surgery here a few days ago little short lady sits back in the pulpit on the right hand side back towards the back Valerie that's it Valerie the lady started crying I said what's going on baby she said oh preacher you don't know enough time she said my marriage is a mess she said my boyfriend is a mess he took everything she said I got it but she started telling me on tears and so I told her about the holiday and she said why you tell me that for your hands up in this building on a Wednesday night on a night you didn't expect it the Holy Ghost is calling us back to sacrifice we need to fill up this prayer chain we need to fill up this paper you need to put your name on here